The Theory of Light by Sipiwe and Lovu. Plot Summary, Part 3. Epidemiology, Love in the Time of HIV. This is the study of epidemics. So now we are at the part where Jeannie arrives with her suitcase and dolls in hand to look for Vida. She wants to save his life the same way that he saved hers. He does not know how to respond and dislikes the attention. He does not want to be responsible for Jeannie and tries to persuade her to go home. She spends her first night with him behind the bakery and he then realises that their lives are intertwined whether he likes it or not. Now they accompany each other on the street and soon she discovers that he collects scrap metal and builds sculptures of the people who have made up his life on the street. He feels as if Jeannie entered his life for the purpose of making him realise the importance of his sculptures. One day, while they are collecting scraps, Jeannie cuts herself on a piece of metal, and before he can help her, she tells him that she has HIV. She then proceeds to tell him about everything, and tells him about everything in her life. Jeannie accepts Vida for who he is, and for who he was also. And to show Jeannie the same acceptance, he then tells his story, concealing nothing about his past. There was now a complete acceptance between the two of them, which for them provided a sense of liberation. The house that Jack built is described in this chapter as Vida decides that with Jeannie's condition, she would need to be living somewhere like that. It now belongs to Vida. The history of the house is also Vida's history. His great-grandfather, Jacob, an eccentric Afrikaner, built the house. He had a son, Frederick, with his maid, Blue, a Khoisan woman. His son and grandson could only reside in the house as servants due to the zoning laws of the time within the country. The house was left to Vida, but he felt conflicted. If he lived there, he would disappoint his father but if he sold it, he would have disappointed his grandfather and great-grandfather. In the end, he decided that he would do nothing for the house, with the house, because that would be easier. The house and garden became city treasures, and therefore the city council, among other societies, paid for the maintenance of the house by paying for Stephanus and Matilda, the gardener and the maid. The man himself then said that it was colonial, So the city council was ordered to stop, and the house became neglected. Despite that, Matilda and Stephanus stayed without pay. Vida move into the house. Vida finds his grandfather's belongings, and Jeannie is fascinated by Blue. There was no trace of her, except for Blue's slippers, which Jeannie was convinced belonged to Blue. Preparing for their stay, Jeannie and Vida go shopping for a mattress. Valentine and another woman helped them. They find this process quite long. They then drive to Thomas Michael's Harper Market, where Marcus ambushes them. Marcus gestures towards the mattress in despair. Vida ponders that he might find himself without Jeannie one day, while Marcus and Jeannie are having their conversation. Marcus believes Jeannie took the news of him leaving for America too well. He tries to persuade her to join him. He tells her that he loves her, which she says is not true. She believes that he wants to love her, and letting her go is the way that he can love her and she can love him. The next chapter is quite short, and more of Jeannie and Vida's relationship is revealed. We see that they are now sleeping together, and they promise to never love each other, as it is freeing to not have that kind of responsibility. The next chapter spans over two decades. Vida succeeds as an artist, while Jeannie battles with HIV. They never define their relationship. Jeannie helps Vida to become famous by encouraging him to show his sculptures to Beatrice. He is a true post-colonial artist. They are only apart when he goes to Stockholm every year for a retreat. Every year upon his return, Jeannie is waiting for him on the veranda. Initially, Jeannie follows Vida's advice by eating baked marijuana goods or drinking moringa tea. She fights TB 
and takes her antiretrovirals. But after one trip, Vida comes back to discover that she has stopped taking her medication. She has planned her death. She wants to die, but Vida sees it as betrayal. He takes her to the hospital, where she is diagnosed with cervical cancer and given even more medication. Several years later, it is his birthday. Jeannie wakes him up to wish him, and he says that he loves her, to which she replies that he is her home.